Google, I think, as a whole, or Google from the executive level, their goal here is they don't want to, I mentioned the timidity point, they don't want to be in political controversies, right? They, they, they've they had very dramatic sort of episodes about like, what are the skin color of their Google image results? If I ask for a CEO, right? And there's been big protests about it. There's been, you know, the big issues about like the makeup of the workforce sort of in tech. There was, you know, that James Damore sort of episode in 2017 or 2018 where Google engineer, you know, there's like, it actually took a while. People forget it was, it was kind of up in the air for a while, but there was like mass protests and like a, a, a uprising amongst the employee base that this guy has to be fired for putting forward a paper or, or, or a memo that basically said, the reason we don't have very many women, relatively speaking, in technical roles is because we only hire at the extremes of a distribution and men are more widely dispersed in a distribution. Women are more sort of tight group. That's like the mm -hmm. argument by and large. What I'm not, I'm not legislating that argument, okay? But you can't ignore that episode in my estimation as to what happened here. Because what happened is there was a debate about sort of women in tech that manifested through someone saying maybe the overwhelming consensus that there's no women in tech because tech is tech is sexist. Maybe that's not correct. Maybe there is sort of a biological explanation or a, a, a population level sort of explanation for it. And what happened was that person got fired and, and fired very publicly and sort of like, it, you know, excommunicated from tech sort of as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether Damore was right or not or the contents of his argument. What mattered was the mechanics of what happened because you fast forward to whatever happened over the last few months and there's people tweeting about or talking about, oh yeah, I was in Google and I knew this was going to happen or I talked to a friend in Google and they're like, yeah, this is going to be a disaster X, Y, Z. But you think about what is the problem with someone getting fired for expressing a view that's counter to the overwhelming sort of consensus. If they get fired, anyone else who has a view counter to that overwhelming consensus, they learn the lesson. Yeah. They learn the lesson of not to dissent because the cost is your job and not just your job, your career. So you get to this point where you have this overwhelming sort of ideological position that is clearly controlling this process. And we know that's the case. We can see the outputs, right? It's clear that Google is like a caricature of like the most left-wing right. online sort of person, you know, uh, it, on it Twitter like or, or threads or whatever. Honestly, it was like it reads a satire. Like parody to the point that I'm reading different screenshots or seeing different screenshots on X. And I, and the, by the way, I think that's the first time on the podcast I've called it X and not Twitter. I'm seeing these screenshots and I'm not sure what's real or what's not. Yeah, when I wrote my article on Wednesday, I reproduced every single one because I, this is one of the problems with AI. People are faking stuff all the time, right? And so yeah. you're like, and, the, and this was so bad. You're like, no way this is real. People are it just making it up now. And and nope, it's real. <laughs> Yes, here we are. So, um, so I think so. This is a so I think what happened was you get to this situation. You have a core group of Google that is kind of like me. I don't want to get involved in culture wars. I don't want to get involved in politics. I want to write about tech companies and business models and things like disruption, right? Mm -hmm. And you can imagine being a leadership in Google, and you don't want to go through the more situation again. You don't want to like be attacked by the media for being sexist or racist. So you're just like, you'll just go along with it. Just, just let's just get you muddle through, right? You muddle through and you, you make changes and you, you, you make sure your image results are X, Y, Z. And you have a team that's like, we're on this. We're going to take care of this. We're going to make sure it's not biased. And you're like, fine, just go do what you want to do. Leave us. Right. We have work to do. We have research to do. We have infrastructure to build. We have all these advantages that I just articulated earlier in this podcast to enhance and to build out. And fine, if you want to take care of that, you go over there. You're saving us from getting attacked by the media and you're not in our ears bothering us with all your social justice stuff, blah, 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 blah. You can see a Google manager taking this sort of view. The problem is that you end up in a situation where they're in charge of RLHF and the prompt engineering. 
and you end up with this catastrophic product that is, again, it's so bad that it's indistinguishable from their worst possible enemy creating a, a satire of what they're doing, right? And mm -hmm. and that's compounded by the fact no one in your company will raise their hand and say, this is a problem. Everyone learned the lesson about dissent at Google, particularly when it comes to dissent about these specific issues, these questions of diversity, these questions of gender, these questions of, of you know, just these political questions. Right. And, and so that's what I think that's how, what happened. That's how we got to where we are. And that raises real fundamental questions about Google going forward. In addition to the business model questions, which is, can they actually build, can you actually build a good product when no one in your, in your company is empowered to raise their hand and say, we might have a problem here. Is the culture utterly and completely ruined? And by the way, in, in, in full coming clean on my part, I wrote last year about the, the Biden executive order about AI and the importance of not being centralized and open source models. And I frame that in the model of like innovation and having different approaches and not being locked in. But may, and maybe I should have been, maybe I was being like a Google executive, not wanting to get in culture wars. This is the other reason for open source, yeah. right? At the end, like at the end of the day, if you if you have this centralized AI, centralized power attracts people that are into the political game for the politics. They're not the researchers that just want to be left alone. They're not the infrastructure folks trying to build products. They're not the newsletter writers that just want to write about business models. These are people that want the fight. They want to go out there. They want to call you racist or sexist or whatever it might be. And if you're not going to join them in battle internal to Google, you're going to end up with this product. And if you don't want to say, look, we need open source because there is a a, a power center being developed here that is attracting the most extreme ideological actors, you're going to end up in a world where no one's fighting for open source because uh, no one realizes the stakes. But God bless Google for showing us all the stakes.